Hi, I'm David. And I'm Alexa. And together we are Folk on the Move. We are a couple who travel full time in our self converted Ford Transit van that you see behind us. Normally, the goal with our channel is to show you our tiny nomadic lifestyle as we seek simplicity and adventure, but this is a slight detour because we really wanted to share our build series and how we turned our empty cargo van into a tiny home on wheels. Although we're not technically professional builders, we managed to convert this van using minimal materials and resources, and we're so proud of how it turned out. <laughs> Yeah. Like we cannot wait to show you how we did it. So our goal with this series of van build videos is to be a resource if you're looking to convert your own van or just entertaining if you're curious how we did it. Everything that we used is linked below as well as a link to our blog, folkonthemove.com. We're going to have a write up of all of these steps so you can check that out too. Let's do it. This video details how we installed our van subfloor and how we finished it with Forbo sheet marmoleum. Subfloor is the foundation of your floor. It provides a level surface, adds extra insulation, and supports the weight of the materials you install in your van. For this project, we used wood glue, great stuff, gaps and cracks, concrobium mold proofing, silicone, an electric drill, wood screws, and a jigsaw. We built our subfloor out of 2x2 two two inch furring strips and 3 quarter inch plywood sheets. It's important to note that our van has a high roof, so we had plenty of extra headroom to spare, which is why we were okay using 2x2 two two inch rather than 1x2 inch furring strips. If you are worried about headspace in your van, consider using 1x2 furring strips and half inch plywood to save that extra inch of headroom. The first thing we did was clean the metal van floor thoroughly and prep it for installation. Next, we made a template of the floor out of builder's paper. Side note, I personally hate working with builder's paper, but it's so helpful down the road. To do this, we rolled out the builder's paper and then cut and taped large pieces of it together to form one single template of our floor's surface. Next, we constructed the furring strip framework that would support our plywood sheets. The furring strips need to be close enough together that they support the weight of the items in your van. We used the ridges of the van floor as a guide for spacing our furring strips that run the length of the van, then added cross pieces where we wanted extra support. We glued our furring strips in place using liquid nail and piled on a bunch of heavy objects to make sure the strips adhered to the floor properly. We are making progress, almost done, just a few more of these little cross pieces to glue in, but um, it's turned to quite the ordeal. Uh, realized right away we did not have enough heavy stuff. Um, these two by twos from Home Depot are super crooked and we knew that going into it. I um, underestimated how, how hard it would be to flatten them out. It's working, we're getting it down um, and we're making sure the parts that are more essential to have perfectly flat are flat. We've just got a few more bits to go and that's why it looks like a mess in here because we just found all the heavy stuff that we could. Um, almost done. While the glue dried, we used our builder's paper template to cut our 3 quarter inch plywood for the subfloor surface. To do this, we laid our plywood end to end, then traced the template on top of the plywood to replicate the template. Before securing our plywood sheets to the furring strips, we insulated our floor by filling the gaps between the furring strips with Havelock wool. This process was super easy and entertaining because how can you not have fun when playing with wool? We chose to attach our plywood to the furring strips by screwing them in place with wood screws. The screws worked fine, but in hindsight, we would have used liquid nail again to secure the plywood to the furring strips. We'll talk more about that later. Just to be safe, we sprayed all of our subflooring with concrobium for mold prevention. After doing some research, we read horror stories of people dealing with mold, and we just wanted to avoid that and play it safe. Our final step with the subfloor was to fill the gaps along the perimeter of the plywood with great stuff, gaps and cracks, expanding foam. This product filled any gaps to form a complete solid surface for our marmoleum to lay flat on and adhere to. The spray foam was really messy and hard to control, so we just used a putty knife to cut off the excess and level out the surface. By creating a solid surface, we hope to keep moisture from getting under the subfloor over time. That's it for our subfloor. We have all of the products that we used linked below along with our blog post detailing each step of the process. Now, on to the installation of our Forbo sheet marmoleum. 
When it comes to floor covering material, you have a lot of options. We've seen a lot of folks use the click lock flooring, which is great, but we chose to use sheet marmoleum instead for a few reasons. In addition to marmoleum flooring being non-toxic, which is something we tried to do with as many of our materials as possible, it's also antimicrobial, eco-friendly, and pretty easy to maintain. The other big reason we chose marmoleum sheet flooring is because it came as one large sheet instead of a bunch of individual pieces. We really liked this because we felt that a single sheet would do a better job of protecting the subfloor below from any liquids that might spill in the van. One downside to marmoleum is how fragile it is during the installation process. We had to be extra careful not to bend the edges and to make sure that the subfloor beneath was smooth and clean. This brings us back to why we would have preferred to glue our subfloor plywood in place rather than screw it, because we had to think of a way to cover all of those screw heads that would have been visible through the marmoleum. Our solution was to cut and glue a layer of quarter inch plywood on top of the three quarter inch ply. This was a pain, but it did the trick. Hindsight 2020, right? We used heavy objects to make sure that the quarter inch plywood was pressed firmly onto the glue and that the glue was spread evenly underneath. This was probably overkill, but just to make sure that that quarter inch plywood stayed down, we used a nail gun all along the perimeter. Next, we cut our marmoleum to the approximate shape of our floor template. Because marmoleum expands after being glued, we undercut it just a little bit to make sure it would fit just right. To cut the marmoleum, we used a standard box cutter, but it was way harder than we anticipated. Hindsight, we wish we would have bought one of those Forbo recommended knives that are designed to cut marmoleum with ease. It's linked below. Installing the marmoleum was a two-person job. I held the marmoleum while Alexa spread glue on one half of the van floor. Then I laid that half of the marmoleum down onto the glue. Then we flipped sides so I could hold the second half of the marmoleum up while Alexa spread glue on that half of the floor. It's important to not bend the marmoleum during this process to prevent it from tearing. It's also important to spread the glue evenly with a trowel. Once the marmoleum was laid flat, we used a rented 100 pound roller to flatten it completely, rolling out any bumps or bubbles in the marmoleum. We also made a point to roll out the edges thoroughly to make sure that they wouldn't curl up over time. Just to be safe, we left a bunch of heavy items on the marmoleum overnight to make sure it wouldn't warp during the drying process. We don't have any footage of this last step unfortunately, but the very last thing we did was silicone all along the perimeter of the marmoleum. The silicone closed any gaps between the marmoleum and the wall, making it watertight to keep moisture out. That's it, thank you for watching. We really hope this video helps, and remember all the materials and resources we mentioned are linked below, so check them out. If you liked this video, please consider hitting that like button, as well as subscribing to our channel. Oh, yeah. We're going to continue sharing our tiny nomadic lifestyle on here, and we would love to have you along for the ride. See you soon.